I'm Clarence Reynolds. Ensuring unhindered network expansion is a top priority, especially with the exponential rise in data traffic and computational demands. Telecommunications networks play a crucial role in this expansion, and one major challenge is keeping this growth both sustainable and energy efficient. Joining me to discuss a collaboration to address these issues are Chandresh Ruparel, Senior Director, Wireless Core Infrastructure at Intel, and Suresh Goyal, CTO and Technology at Nokia Cloud Network Services. Welcome to you both. Suresh, I'll start with you. What are Nokia's customers asking for as it relates to sustainability? First of all, Clarence, great to meet you. So primarily, our customers are asking for uh, more profitability in the networks. They are, they're trying to monetize it much better. It's quite understandable. So they want to encourage traffic growth. They want to encourage the deployment of new applications, new services. But at the same time, they want to ensure that the network growth that occurs um, is uh, sustainable. Now, the exciting part in all of this is at Nokia and Intel, uh, we have discovered that by taking a systemic close look at what's possible with energy efficiency for software running on networks, an area that hasn't been looked at, uh, I think with the kind of attention that it deserves, we can provide orders of magnitude improvement in energy efficiency than the levels that we have today. And Chandrish, within the broad agenda that Suresh outlined, what's been Intel's immediate focus and what are your first results? Both Intel and Nokia have major corporate-wide initiatives to address sustainability. Um, for Intel, for example, manufacturing of silicon supply chain, uh, all the collaborations that we have corporate-wide, uh, there is a huge focus on sustainability. But what I would like to try and um, focus on at this point is the, the collaboration that we have with Nokia in the core network space. You have the silicon technology that continues to deliver in line with Moore's law in terms of performance and power efficiencies. Uh, a great example here is Intel's innovation with eCore and uh, you know you will see this in display at Mobile World Congress in Sierra Forest. But on top of that, one of the biggest untapped opportunity is the power savings that you can get in runtime. And the reason why this is untapped is because it is complex to implement. So we are talking about when the workload is running, even if the infrastructure is optimally utilized, there is still a huge opportunity to save because when you look at a typical carrier 24 hour traffic model pattern, you'll see that the peak performance requirement is really for just a few hours. The rest of the time, you have an opportunity to save energy. The biggest requirement here is that the service level expectations or requirements of the carriers cannot be compromised. You cannot compromise the key performance metrics that the carriers are looking for. That makes this a complex solution. First, you need silicon capabilities such as granular power controls, the speed at which you can modulate these controls, the comprehensive nature of telemetry that you need and other capabilities that you need in the silicon to make it happen. On top of that, you need intelligence in software to be able to take advantage of it. And this is where Intel Infrastructure Power Manager for 5G Core comes into play. But even that is not sufficient. Because it's runtime, this requires interaction with the network functions. It requires interactions with the system and a continuous look at the different traffic patterns that are flowing through to dynamically manage the power without compromising carrier performance metrics or service level requirements. And I'm delighted to say that our close collaboration with Nokia 
over, you know, I would say more than a year now on specifically this capability has given the level of maturity and confidence in the solution, allowing Nokia to now deliver this capability into the market in 2024. It requires the team to work very closely on innovative methods to be able to implement uh, the right solution. And it requires skills and knowledge of the network, both horizontally as well as vertically in order to deliver a capability like this. Suresh, what results have you been seeing at Nokia? Let me add a little bit to what um, Chandresh summarized really beautifully. So I mentioned earlier, orders of magnitude, and that's a very large number. So let me try to build some intuition around um, why do we say that. So for those of you who like to think in terms of iterations, uh, you can think of uh, energy efficiency in the network of being made up of three categories of things, right? One is, as Chandresh mentioned, the improvements that you get with silicon. You know, that's something that's governed by Moore's law. You know, Moore's law has been good for the past 60, 70 years. It's gonna continue delivering increases in energy efficiency with every new generation of silicon. The second category, which has been our primary focus in this past year, is how frugally, how efficiently does the software use the hardware infrastructure and the electricity that runs it? Okay. And the third category, this is a new category that we've been looking at, is how energy efficient is the software itself? So, you know, telecom software is not necessarily designed with energy efficiency in mind. It's designed for performance and resilience in all sorts of other metrics. But adding this new metric, gives us a lot more opportunity. So if you look at the opportunity in each of these individual buckets, and by the way, the energy efficiency overall, the efficiency is a multiplication of all these three, you can see that uh, there's a factor of you know, several orders of magnitude, maybe 100 or more, that is possible. Intel has developed immense ability to control the amount of power that a chip is consuming uh, based on its reading on how much is the load on the CPU. So we tested this ability and how much savings does it bring, in particular using the intelligent piece of software that Intel has developed, Infrastructure Power Manager, IPM, by running uh, two of our most critical network functions in a configuration which mirrors a very large network which is subject to very heavy traffic and very large variations to it as would happen in a normal network. And what we found was that with the ability that IPM and the chips underneath have to change the frequency and the voltage of the chips very fast in a, in, a, in a period of microseconds in response to the traffic or the load that is on the CPUs. Throughout the day, with the normal um, traffic pattern, we were able to get 40% energy savings. 40% energy savings is an unbelievable number. It's a humongous number. And the best part of this result is it sits on top of like I'd explained earlier with those buckets and so on, the categories, on top of any improvement that we get with gen-to-gen uh, -gen silicon improvements. So for instance, if you think of um, the improvements that you get from going from, let's say, uh, Cascade Lake or then, then to uh, uh, um, Sapphire Rapids or to Sierra Forest, there is already a huge increase in energy efficiency um, because of the silicon. But this 40% will be on top of that improvement that you get. The other thing that we discovered because of the um, nature of the two functions that we chose, 
The same level of energy efficiency improvement can be obtained for all the functions, not just two, but all the functions that we have in the core. That's again a, a very dramatic finding. And we stress tested it enough in our testing that our product line managers are eager to release this as a commercial feature within a few months. And Chandresh, given the role of the Infrastructure Processing Module, or IPM, can you tell us more about that technology and its evolution plans? Intel Infrastructure Power Manager for 5G Core uh, is intended to address the gamut of workloads that are in the core infrastructure. Um, and that includes both control and user plane. And a critical uh, the thing to remember here is uh, this is not a point solution that we have um, worked with Nokia and we expect it to deliver across multiple generations to come from a platform perspective, delivering this benefit, as I mentioned, on top of all the silicon improvements, the si silicon technology improvements that the carriers take advantage of. And so, Suresh, what else can customers expect from this partnership? We have a vision and a plan to deliver orders of magnitude in uh, energy efficiency improvement over, you know, over the uh, years to come. Uh, we believe that this 40% is just scratching the surface and we can deliver similar savings year over year for years to come. The expertise that we have uh, in how networks operate, how software functions, what flexibility it offers in terms of you know, scale in, scale out, our ability to move it to places where renewable energy might be available. We'll take advantage of all of this. On top of that, we'll bring in new and more sophisticated tools, for an example, right? Um, we were talking about observing um, how the software is running and loading the system and then reacting in microseconds. But now we're going to add to that the intelligence of prediction. Now you take that and you couple with that to the fact that you can respond very quickly in case your predictions are wrong. Uh, we will have deep observability uh, techniques which would allow us to identify areas of inefficiency. And then we'll use things like generative AI to auto-correct uh, those, uh, you know, those areas. So, you know, I can go on about this, but here's, here's the uh, summary. What our customers can expect is a integrated ecosystem of hardware and software and intelligent services that ensure that the network and the software on it is running in the most optimal way possible without uh, 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 you know, compromising any other service metrics, okay? And so what that means is with this burden, this concern off the plate, our customers can focus on what they, what they have to do, which is how do you make more money from the networks? I'd like to get a perspective from both of you on how both Intel and Nokia achieved this level of partnership. And Chandresh, we'll start with you. This type of innovation, the level of accomplishment as Suresh, Suresh mentioned is super exciting, but it's not achieved uh, by simply uh, throwing the technology over the wall. It requires the level of collaboration across engineering management, and business teams to ensure that what is being delivered is compelling from an innovation standpoint, but not only that, it has to also translate to a deployable solution in a relatively very short time. And that's what we have demonstrated in, in delivering this capability. So really excited that we have really skilled and capable team members coming together to come up with innovative ideas and the smartest way to implement those ideas to deliver the, the most benefit to the carriers. Anything to add, Suresh? 
you have to think outside the box and you need partners who can think along with you and make bold commitments. And Intel is, you know, one such partner. We've discovered a great partner in Intel. They stand shoulder to shoulder with us and their leadership. And I really want to thank the leadership for this, that they're willing to make such commitments for, you know, sustainability. Uh, and, uh, you know, they have this uh, uh, urgency to deliver, which we absolutely love. So the pace of collaboration is uh, great. It's relentless, actually. Um, uh, the chemistry is wonderful. Both our teams feel as if you're, there is just a single company, single group that's doing this work. So, you know, it's the net sum of all of this that has made this collaboration just absolutely wonderful. And Chandrish, will we get a chance to see this partnership in action maybe at MWC? Absolutely. Uh, it's in display, the, the capability that we just talked about, uh, the massive power savings. Um, you will see, uh, you'll find both Nokia uh, and Intel folks at the Intel booth uh, demonstrating this capability with 40% uh, uh, power savings uh, in the core uh, wireless core infrastructure, packet core. Uh, we are absolutely ready to engage uh, with uh, with carriers and looking forward to driving this into deployment uh, in the infrastructure, uh, delivering the results um, in live network. And Suresh, do you have anything to add? I would request everyone, the people who are listening to this and our customers, please come to the booth uh, talk to us. Uh, we have a lot more to tell you, and we are absolutely ready to engage. Chandrish and Suresh, thank you both for joining me today with these insights on your partnership. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. 